What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 5. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. I live in a very creepy home. I would hear knocking all the time and walking through my wood floors in the kitchen. I lived alone and no animals. One night in particular, I got freaked out so bad. Felt like my heart would jump from my chest. It was around 2 a.m. in the morning. I was fast asleep. I heard a loud bang from somewhere in my home. It was one of those bangs I wasn't sure I was dreaming or not. So I just laid there for a minute, listening intently. My room was located at the very end of the hallway near my bathroom. The hall would meet living room, then wrap around to my kitchen and back room. As I was listening intently, my central air is extremely loud. But I heard, clear as day, someone run their fingernail down the metal vents that spits out cold air from the unit near my kitchen. It was loud. By that time, I jumped into fight mode immediately. I texted my father and told him there might be an intruder in my home. I pulled out my pistol and flashlight and hugged the wall near my open door and listened. My heart was pounding. I heard small footsteps coming from the kitchen and was absolutely positive someone broke into my home. I gathered my courage and turned into the hall, pointed my pistol at the hallway. Walking down the hallway, there is another room on my left, which is pitch black. I leaned my head in there and peek, but nothing. I quietly walked towards my living room and peeked and saw nothing. I turned the corner leading to my kitchen and sweating profusely. I flipped the light on into the kitchen and pointed my gun. Every single cabinet door, oven door was wide open. I yelled, if anyone is in that back room, you better show yourself or be shot. Nothing replied back to me. I made my way into the back room and could hear the creaks on the wood floor from my weight. I jump into the back room to reveal absolutely no one in the house. To this day, I have activity happen, and I just don't have an explanation for. Account 2. About ten years back, I moved into my brother's floor apartment. It was in the hood, but that never stopped me from walking to the corner store at night when I ran out of smokes. It was a five-minute walk at best. I could see the store from my front door, just cross the street, walk a couple minutes, cross a major intersection, and you're there. So I head out as normal. As I got to the store parking lot, there was a man in a car demanding my attention. Man, hey, hey, you girl, hey, come here, come here, hey, come here, come here, hey. At this point, I had already walked past and was seconds from entering the store, and I hear him suddenly yell, I love you. I just cringe a bit, but shake it off and buy my stupid cancer sticks. When I exit the store, he's still there, but something is different. As I'm walking back across the intersection, I notice that dude quickly pulled out the lot in my direction, seemingly pursuing me. I'm thinking, probably just imagining this, but felt it in my gut. I turned to see him at the intersection. He pulled onto the same street that I was suddenly desperately running across. The entrance to my brother's apartment was on a side, frontage road running parallel with the road there. As I made it to the side road, I turned to see that guy was indeed following me, which meant he had to drive for a few seconds and basically make a weird U-turn to get to me. But he didn't know that my destination was the first building there. I was already watching from my front door as he erratically drove down the side road looking for me, angrily swerving all over the place. I was terrified and super lucky that the apartment was so close. If I had lived in the next apartments over, I might not be here today. Now I know better and carry protection and won't go walking at night without my dog. Account 3. Two of us driving together. Stopped to fill gas late at night. The gas station was closed. Beautiful summer night. I stepped away from the car to take the pup over to a grassy spot since we were stopped. Cute 20-something girl who was driving with me was filling up the car and standing illuminated by the lights over the pumps. Lone car comes tearing past on the road and suddenly does a screeching turn into the station and stops next to our car, opposite side of the pump. Very large guy, reddish beard, mid to late twenties is already out of the car and halfway between the pumps, moving toward her when he sees me returning to the car with the dog. He freezes in place, staring at me. 
There was another guy who looked like his twin, sitting tense behind the wheel of their still-running car and also staring. Neither of them moved a muscle after they saw me. They were not scared, very tense, undecided, maybe. The whole incident happened fast. We both got into our car and drove away. They were 100, planning something unspeakable. Be careful out there, people. Account 4. In my mom's house, the bed that my sister and I shared when we were younger breathes sometimes. It feels as if you are laying your head on someone's chest. For years. I didn't say anything about it because I would experience it mostly when I was alone in the dark. I would try holding my breath to see if it's my imagination. To be fair, I am a huge scaredy cat. Can't even watch horror movies at all, but it would continue to rise and fall. One day I brought it up to my sister and mother and they say they have both felt it, but since it never bothers or tries to scare them, they ignore it. I don't sleep on that bed anymore. I haven't noticed anything else off, but I do hate being alone in my mom's house. Account 5. I was alone by myself on a motorbike in a rural area of Cambodia in 1996, back when the Khmer Rouge were still actively hunting down foreigners and offering bounties to any local villager that could capture one. Me being an America white guy, I thought I was invincible. When I had stopped to enjoy the view for a few minutes, a logging truck had passed right past me. With logs in the back and when they passed me, I could see a group of men in the cab with their eyes all lit up. Just as they passed me, they slammed on the brakes and came to a complete halt. That's when I started up my motorbike quicker than I've ever done before and flew out of there like a bat out of hell. I looked back and the truck was slowly trying to turn around but couldn't really do it because the road was too narrow, and that's the last I ever saw of them. Account 6. I have a spooky child. She's always talked about ghost friends and how they died. It's usually just a quick mention of them every now and then. But there's one incident I still don't understand. We were living in a rural little town at the time. She was about four. She was playing out front on the patio, and I was in the kitchen getting her a snack. I could see her perfectly through the door, until I turned my back to reach in the cabinet. Just as I did, I heard tires squealing and a huge thump. I whipped back around, and she wasn't sitting where I had last seen her. I ran like mad over to the door, and there she was standing just to the side of the door so I couldn't see her from my previous angle. I looked all around as I was scooping her up. Nothing, absolutely nothing, was out of the ordinary. I put her down, and she was perfectly calm. Me. I was on an adrenaline overdose. Me. What happened? I heard a crash. Her. There was an accident. Me. Where? I don't see anything. Her. It was a long time ago. Me. I don't. Her. It's okay, Mom. Addie was just showing me how she died. Can I have a snack now? She still says spooky things, but nothing at that level since, thank God. Account 7. Had a recurring dream in my late teens and well into my twenties about an older dude that was always wearing military uniforms. Mostly it was an all-white uniform, but sometimes olive or brown, and at least once camo. He never said anything to me, even if I would try to engage him or ask him questions. Just kind of looked at me and smiled. I can recall five different dreams he was in, but there may have been more. Kind of a short, stocky guy, white hair, clean-shaved face, just a calm demeanor. I haven't dreamed of him in over ten years, but I still wonder what the hell that was all about. Account 8 when my grandparents passed away, my family moved into their house to help take care of my uncle, who was slightly special needs, and had lived there his whole life. I got a lot of creepy vibes in that house, and had a lot of nightmares while living there. One evening, I had the worst nightmare ever that was super realistic. Towards the end of the dream, I saw the scariest demon smiling at me with the blackest black eyes, or lack of, more like emptiness. Hundreds of razor-sharp teeth curled into a smile and strange cracked white skin, almost like bone. The demon somehow conveyed to me that he was going to murder me just by smiling at me. This nightmare made me not want to sleep for weeks out of fear of seeing this thing again. I did not tell my family about this dream. I did not get along with this uncle who we lived with, and I rarely spoke to him unless completely necessary.
The next day, after that nightmare, he asked me a question. He said, Hey, do you still have that app on your phone? The app he was referring to was some stupid phone app for reading EMF. I downloaded the app just for shits and giggles a few weeks prior because, as I said, the house was creepy and I tried to see if I could pick up any messages from ghosts or demons in the home. I told him, yeah, I still have it. Why? He said, oh, I was just wondering because last night I saw something standing at my doorway and then proceeded to describe the exact demon from my nightmare. I was so freaked out I don't even think I properly responded to him. I told my family about this, and they agreed that something was in the house. None of us slept well the rest of our time there. Luckily, we didn't live in that house for very long before selling it. I still think about that demon from my dream sometimes, and hope I never encounter that smile again. Also, there's no way my uncle could have known what I dreamt. Because like I said, I didn't tell my family about the dream, I fully believe that he saw the same demon in person that I saw in my nightmare. Account 9. My family moved to Indianapolis when I was in second grade. At one point, I was watching TV and a weather alert popped up that showed the radar and different shades of green for the amount of rain and tornado danger areas. I looked outside and the sky was the same fucking shade of green as the weather radar. Subsequent winds shook the hell out of the house. And I was convinced a tornado was going to atomize the house. Probably mundane as hell for someone born in Tornado Alley, but creeped the hell out of me. Account 10. For a few years, my family lived in my great-grandma's house. Everyone said it was haunted. Of course, my dad and I didn't believe it. Then one night, I'm walking to the bathroom when I decide to glance out the front door. As you pass by it on the way to the bathroom, I see two red eyes staring back at me. It was pitch black and the eyes were just glowing. I turned around and went back to bed, full bladder be damned. Account 11. So this one time I was out hunting, northern B.C., on my own. I'm on my quad going down an old trail and I come to the edge of a pond and I look down and there's a bone. Nothing unusual. Then I look a bit further. Deer skull, no biggie. Well, I keep looking, and there's bone set after bone set. I counted at least 20 separate sets, along with two fresh carcasses. I was in the middle of this boneyard. It's dead silent, and I get this spidey sense that something was watching me. I load my rifle and sit and wait a few minutes, but there's nothing. Seriously, the most eerie feeling... I later found out it was most likely a cougar's kill site, and given them amount of bones, it was big and effective. Account 12. My boyfriend and I were hiking in the sequoias one fall, and we ended up on this quiet trail. There was no one in sight, and after crossing this small stream, we both had this odd hair tingling feeling at the same time. We felt like something was watching us. Needless to say, we turned around and got the heck out of there when we reached this clearing. We ran into two hunters. They told us they spotted fresh mountain lion tracks by the stream and warned us to avoid that area. Creepiest experience by far. Account 13. I'm a guy, and when I was 11 or 12, I was flying back home after having spent the summer with my dad. I was sitting next to an adult man on the plane. He tried to talk to me. Now I recognize as flirting, tried to put his hand on my knee, and asked me if I wanted to hang out once the plane landed. This was before 911. And my mom was waiting for me right outside the gate, so nothing happened beyond the encounter on the plane. Fortunately, still creeps me out to this day, though. Account 14. My family and I stayed in Michigan one year with my aunt and uncle, who lived there for a short time. It was along a bay with no super close neighbors but rental houses within eyeshot. It was a really nice house, but felt off. I wasn't the only one who felt it. My entire family did. The first night, there was a, a rental house that had no visitors that week, according to the landlord, but my mom swore she watched lights flicker on and off several times when she couldn't sleep one night and got up around 2.3 a.m., Another night, my oldest sister was asleep on an inflatable mattress in the guest room my parents were in. My middle sister and I were on two other mattresses right outside the door in the upstairs game room type area. My dad hightailed it out of there and decided to sleep in our RV because he said he felt weird in the house and couldn't relax. 
Once again, my mom woke up around 2.3 a.m., but because someone was at the side of her bed saying, Mom, 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 over and over again like one of us kids were trying to wake her up. She woke up and said, What? But no one was there. She woke my oldest sister up and asked what she needed. My oldest sister was dead asleep and said she had been all night. She checked on my middle sister and I, and we were also sound asleep. Neither of us had gotten up all night. I think we ended up cutting the trip short and deciding to explore the surrounding town and staying in a hotel instead of staying there another night. My aunt and uncle moved soon after. My family still often references how creepy that house was, but no one has an explanation for what happened. Account 15. I went to BJ's on a weekday night, and when I went to the back of the store to get pork chops, there was a man there. He wasn't looking for anything. It felt like he was waiting for his prey. As I moved closer to the pork chops, he tried to get his cart between me, my cart, and a pallet of boxes to be unloaded. I grabbed what I needed and maneuvered around him as quickly as I could. He looked displeased, not mad, just displeased. He proceeded to slowly follow me through the store. I paid and hustled my ass to my car, checking over my should to see if he followed me out and would see my car. I drove a long way home in case I was followed. It seems minor. But God, when your gut hits you like that, you just listen and move.